Hello everybody, this is David with another Verilog video on a Basis 3 FPGA. Um, this time I'm doing, a, I'm doing another VGA project where I'm going to do text generation. Um, and so I'm going to tell you, uh, show you all what that involves, um, the ROM that I made, and then instantiating it in the BRAM on the FPGA, going through the Verilog code for a test circuit, and then displaying that text on the screen. So this is a couple of places of the ROM. I have the letter Z, F, and uh, the number four over here. So each ROM is eight by 16 bits, eight by 16. And then I created a ROM that has all 128 ASCII characters. Of course, some of the ASCII characters are non-printable characters. They're control characters. And I just left those blank. There's a lot of um, characters that I didn't fill in anymore. They all, if, if they're not filled in with ones, they're all filled in with zeros. So they're just like a space or a blank, but they all count as bits. And so if I have eight by 16 ROM and I have 128 of those, then I have 16,000 bits for the entire ASCII set. And I want to put that onto the BRAM on the FPGA. Now, you, you, you really should use the, the FPGA block RAM if you have large amounts of data. I mean, you don't have to if you have enough room on the FPGA. But I think it's good practice because then later on down the line, you can decide whether you want to use it on your FPGA or on the block RAM. And so these are the four statements right here. If you're using a ROM or a RAM and you tell it what style, if you're using distributed, that means that distributed memory is built using the lookup tables on the FPGA. So you're using the FPGA fabric when you claim distributed. Now, if you put block, then you're using block memory, which is a complete separate memory. And then here's just an example of a dual port RAM. Um, it's just a, a regular RAM. Like Xilinx does have a manual that you can go in and see examples of how um, you really should uh, write your RAM so that it's instantiated correctly. But then here's that statement right here. I want to use the block RAM and I'm setting up my RAM inside of the BRAM on the FPGA. Now here's the block diagram for my test circuit for my ASCII ROM. So on the left side over here, I have my inputs of the clock and the reset button. Um, the clock feeds into the ASCII ROM, text gen, and VGA controller circuits. Um, here's the ASCII ROM. It, um, so it, it has address and data. So text gen gets information from VGA controller, X and Y, video on. Of course, there's H sync and V sync going out to the connector. Then it takes that information and then pro provides an address to the ROM to get the data back from the ROM um, to color the appropriate pixel. And then here's the signals for the RGB. Okay, here's the ROM I went ahead and created, the ASCII ROM. It's a pretty large file, but I did a lot of copy and pasting. Um, but basically I just did all the numbers and all capital letters of course, um, I got the space, so I know where that's at, a period, a colon, and the pipe. Just using some that I'm going to use in the Pong game. I don't want to go, I didn't want to go through every one and create lowercase letters and all these different characters and stuff. You can if you want, I'll put this on uh, my GitHub and you can do whatever you like with it. You can add and change your characters. But it's just a basic ROM. We have the address coming in, it's 11 bits, and the 8 bits of data coming out. So we have 8 bits of data for each row. And the first seven bits of this 11 uh, in hex are the ASCII value. So when we set up the ASCII, when we push a certain ASCII value to this ROM, we're going to get the, the character we want for that ASCII value. And then this bit over here is just uh, this bit on the far right here. It's just the four bits of hex. It's the row. It's the same for each one. But we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. And we just go all the way up to, what is it, 7F is the last one. So here I'm instantiating that um, as a, I'm using the block RAM on the FPGA. And then um, just a buffer right here, register for the address register. Um, the wire coming in buffers it, um, latches in at the clock for the data. But I did create all of the, I did a smiley face at the second one. So you can see the first one's supposed to be blank. And then... As we go down through, I did all of the, I did a couple special characters. I got plus, minus, I got period. I did all the numbers. 
uh, did all the letters capital letters I didn't touch any of the here's the lowercase letters here I don't want to go through and do that right now maybe I will later on but yeah it goes all the way down to 7x which is or 7f which is the all one pattern so it's all filled with ones and we'll see that when I display it on the uh, screen and with that let me take you over to the Verilog code okay so here I am in Vivado I got a basis 3 project target language is Verilog as always um, here's the four modules over here top VGA controller the ASCII test which is the text generation circuit and then here's the ROM and then here's the modules up here along with the constraints file so here's the VGA controller same VGA controller I've been using um, you can get the code on github here's that ROM I just showed you on my notepad it's in here in Verilog now and then here's the ASCII test circuit just takes in the clock and then those signals from the VGA controller and outputs the RGB value. So we have all the signal decorations here for the ROM address. We need an 11-bit ROM address. Seven bits of that is the character value, the ASCII value. Um, four bits of that is the row value. Then we have a bit address because as we want to read through each bit of each row. And then this is the eight bits of the ROM data that come out. We have an ASCII bit just like we did with the pong ball where it's a zero or one um, to turn on the color and then this is for the area where the ASCII bit will be on here I am instantiating the, the ASCII ROM um, sending in the, the ROM address I create here for the address and then the ROM data coming out here and then here's the ROM interface so the address is the concatenation of the character in the row and the ASCII bit is the one bit that's indexed from the ROM data. But since I had to put this uh, tilde here to um, invert this or reverse the bit address, because um, it's going to count from zero to seven. And it's so if it when it does, it's going to read backwards because X is counting um, up and then this will be counting down. So you have to reverse the bit order to where you start reading at bit seven as X is moving from left to right, and you go from bit seven down to bit zero of the ROM data. So, and then here's the, the ASCII character is a uh, concatenation of um, a Y and X value for the address. The row is just the Y as we go down through. Uh, and then here's the bit address, which is the X value, because it's in the horizontal. And then the ASCII bit on, I'm going to put this in the center of the screen. So I have, I know I have eight by 16 blocks of bits of data and I have 128 of those. So I split it up to go in four rows in the center of the screen. And then here's the RGB multiplexing with not video on. We're not in the display screen. Let's make it blank. If we are, if the if the ASCII bit is on, it's going to be blue letters, and then otherwise it'll be a white background. Here's the top module. Just have the H-Sync, V-Sync, the VGA connector stuff, clock reset. Um, and then here I'm instantiating the VGA controller, the ASCII test module, um, and then all the wires that connect in between them. The, and then the, the RGB buffer down here is always for the VGA. Here's the constraints file. I'm bringing in the clock. I'm using button C as a reset. And then I went ahead in my master XDC and went ahead and reordered this RGB stuff so that I could always just come in and do RGB 11 down to zero like this because the master XDC has these bits like reverse. So I just changed the pin order for the reds, greens, and blues to read the other way. And then I can plug all that in nice this RGB 11 down to zero and then there's the H sync and V sync and then I'll show you it working on the screen okay so here's my ASCII ROM test on the screen here's all the values that I have created the patterns for like I said just the, the numbers all the uppercase letters here's the smiley face down here that's the way I want it and here's the block in the 7F location so there you have it there's the test um, for the text, now we can incorporate the text in our Windows 21 in the Pong game that's selected next. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.